Okay, then that in that one we made two major inventions, and I can tell you a little bit about how that came about. Uh, our capacitors at Hudson Falls were all made with an insulating fluid inserted between uh, rolls of uh, surfaces, of rolls of uh, aluminum foil, uh, fairly large size, from fist size on up to ultimately we made one that uh, stored uh, uh, was it was a type that you'd have was equivalent to three of what you might see the capacitors on a pole. That is not, as I say, ours were made with very thin, very high quality paper down to something like a, a, a thousandth of an inch, uh, separating two conductors, film. Uh, the uh, aluminum film. Uh, the uh, when I went to was assigned the capacitor business, they were already far along in producing a little aluminum rolling mill that made foil from a big aluminum ingots. And the people who were providing the foil to us before, in return for us agreeing to buy our ingots from them, would teach us how to roll it into the various thicknesses of foil that we needed at our own plant. So they're doing what is called vertical integration uh, of the uh, uh, taking over a, uh, something that you buy from somebody else and building it yourself. So that's what was going on as, as I took place. And we were nearing the point where uh, the thing would be making film. The barrier to further improvement was the paper dielectric. Uh, and we, it was a, a substantial part of the cost of the capacitor was in this very thin, very perfect uh, paper, paper insulator. And then it was uh, pumped uh, clear of all water and an insulating fluid was uh, flooded into the, uh, into the boxes before their ship sealed up. So we uh, did investigate the possibility of us providing the building a little uh, a small capacity uh, paper making machine to make our own paper. But in the meantime, I had hired some people from the research laboratory who are expert in the insulating field and experts in other associated fields and they we were uh, those we had hired them to work in an advanced laboratory at, at the capacitor business and they were investigating the use of uh, plastic film in the capacitor business in the big capacitors and to make a long story sh much shorter they discovered a nearly perfect insulating film that uh, the manufacturing processes for making it out of uh, pellets was well developed. So we decided to investigate that and, then, and this particular plastic, polypropylene, uh, when it's built in a manner where it's stretched in two sides, it comes out of the film and then you stretch it both lengthwise and sideways to orient all the molecules in the direction of the surface of the, of the film. Uh, and that machine is called a blown tube 
what they do is they, they melt the ingot in the box and force it with the, uh, force it out through a nozzle into a tube and then they pressurize the tube while it's still hot and it blows up into about a five foot diameter tube, very, very thin, down to a thousandth of an inch uh, of polypropylene film that has been stretched in two directions as an extremely strong when it's stretched uh, and all its molecules are laid out along the film. It's uh, extremely strong to, in, in tension uh, in any direction. Uh, unfortunately, it's also, if you start a tear, it tears quite easily in the other one. But uh, in our process, in the process of doing it, we don't, uh, we don't put any shear stress in it. And it's, uh, we're, you can sit there and roll up the film and send it into the winding machines that wind it into, uh, with the aluminum foil we are making to make it, uh, uh, to make the capacitors. And this one made about a, about nine times the energy storage compared to paper, but its dielectric constant is a measure of how easily it stores energy was, le was three times lower. So we get a, a net improvement of three times in, bo in both in the, in the energy storage in these big things uh, by just changing that dielectric. And the raw material, the plastic material, is substantially lower than, uh, than what is needed in the paper business. So uh, we ended up having about a three to one improvement in the cost of the dielectric and about a three to one advance in its uh, storage capacity. So uh, it isn't often you are able to make an improvement that gives you a very much lower cost uh, at a, uh, uh, at a, a, a substantial improvement in quality. Uh, we then just changed our business over to use that. We're making our own aluminum foil, we're making our own film, and we're winding them and putting them in boxes to make capacitors. We knew that that capacitor technology would replace paper in, in uh, paper, paper capacitors. So we knew that the industry that buys these uh, would not be satisfied by having a single source. So we made the decision to license this about the same time we were introducing it into production for ourselves. We offered all the other manufacturers licenses and know-how to help them set up in the use of the film and the foil to make capacitors. And almost all of the principal manufacturers were very quick to accept that on fair terms. And so that permitted the, in, the whole industry to change over to this uh, remarkably improved project, uh, product. Uh, instead of having, th having three poles with three on each, they could put uh, three times more on one single pole in a very nice appearing cluster. Uh, and uh, I'm, it's, of all the things that we did in my career, I think that one, the leading of that effort uh, was the most satisfying to me to know the kind of improvement I'd made in that major industry.